Today on The Breakfast, petitions have continued to arise even as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos, John Dofa's petition against Songolu and Vivo over Electoral Act Bridge. Also on the breakfast, leaders of three main tribes of Benue State bemoans the recent killings that urged the president to declare a state of emergency in the country without further delay. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. My name is Messi Bukbo and we are broadcasting live from our studios right here in Victoria Island in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, it's very uh, exciting to know that you are there with us this morning. The lineup is very interesting, but as always, we like to talk about what's happening in different parts, you know, of uh, the world. Now, specifically our space, Nigeria, whether online or offline. Now, one conversation that's been making the rounds is that uh, an individual was actually arrested or apprehended by the men of the, uh, the military for impersonation. So, yes, a yet-to-be-identified man in a military uniform was arrested for impersonating soldiers in the FCT. The suspect was arrested after... He couldn't answer basic military questions or provide who his superiors were in the military ranks. Uh, there was a viral clip to that particular effect. The suspect uh, was also quoted to say, please forgive me uh, and all of that. When he couldn't answer some of the questions where this military, very angry soldiers, uh, you don't even want to be confronted with them. However, we can, you know, for sure say, uh, if the punishment method uh, out to the suspect would deter him from impersonating officers who put their lives at risk to protect, you know, the Nigerian citizen. But we'll just take a bit. I, I, I don't know. Can we hear what he's saying here? If we can, then we'll quickly just run this tape now. Who is your CSF? One to three. One to three is your CSF. Who's your CSA? One to two. One to two. See you. We'll give you Big this. soldier. Are you a soldier? Mm. You did not see an idiot. Are you a soldier? We're a complete dream. Are you a soldier? Eh? Yeah? Are you a soldier? Yeah? Yeah. Talk now. Are you a soldier? Yeah. 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 You are not a soldier. Yeah. Why are you putting on this camo? Yeah. Who is your CSA? Yeah. Who is your CSA? Yeah. One to three. One to three is your CSA. Who's your CSA? One to two. two. See you. We'll give you Big this. Soldier. Are you a soldier? Mm. You did not see an idiot. Are you a soldier? We'll We're a complete dream. Are you a soldier? Eh? Yeah? Are you a soldier? Talk now. Are you a soldier? Are you, a soldier? Are you, a soldier? you are not a soldier. Uh -huh. Why are you putting on this camo? Uh, that that's it. But usually there's a statement that says if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. And impersonation as much as we look at it it goes beyond just wearing a camouflage that's just like full flat if i see him it probably might just be difficult to identify whether or not he's you know really a military personnel or not i mean he looks very kitted right but um this these are some of the issues that we have to grapple with as a people in our society. And I think that there's a lot of work that has to be done. All hands must be on deck. It's a collective responsibility. Government is involved. Military, you and I, you know, we're all involved in all of this. But um, just to speak to, you know, the facts is that Section 484 of the Criminal Code Act in Nigeria uh, speaks to the issue of impersonation. It's general, so it's not just related to whether you're impersonating a military personnel or an officer, you know, just a, a specific group. Impersonation has been captured within this part, you know, of the law. And it, it says that it, it's in general, so impersonation in general, any person who with 
intent to defraud any person, falsely represent himself to be someone or the person living or dead, is guilty of felony and is liable to imprisonment for three years. I think that we, we need to do better as a people because there's no way you're going to have a perfect society. And of course, we know that perfection is an illusion. But however, we're saying seeming perfection. We can't continue like this. I mean, what's the rationale behind you dressing like a military officer? Only God can tell because that's what we say. How many persons he has intimidated, frustrated, beaten, you know, done all sorts of things to, all in the name of wearing that. So, but, but it is several lessons to take away from this. It's the fact that, first of all, as a security, as a, as a military, uh, if we look at the military as uh, part of the entire government or part of the Nigerian polity, then I think that there's a lot of work that has to be done in terms of, you know, beefing up uh, the features of security. So it, it's almost impossible for you to impersonate uh, a military officer or the military itself. Okay, so I think that the problem might just be a lacuna because there's so much accuracy in everything, the uniform. There should be some features that it's almost impossible for you to. People can actually dictate and say, hey, so, I mean, we're just saying, we have no uh, facts to all of this. How many persons would afford pray for this young man in the video? Now he's begging, he's pleading, but that's a crime. And the law speaks about it explicitly. It has nothing to do whether it's a military, but, you know, impersonation generally, you, you probably have to pay for all of that. So um, at this particular point, I think it's very important that we pay attention. The military pays attention to ensuring that uh, security features for uh, kids and what have you, it's, you know, top notch. That is almost impossible for anyone to actually impersonate without the ordinary person having to think twice and can say, hey, this is a fake, right? Because I, you can say for sure that a lot of persons probably would have fallen victim. But it's important that you know that we have a law to that. And if, if you try to act like me or I try to act like you in any way, whatever the intentions are, it is a crime because the criminal code 484 has actually stipulated. And then you, are, you probably would have to do a time of, you know, three years in prison. So yes, if you can't do the crime, please, uh, or can't do the time, don't bother doing the crime. And we can't continue to excuse bad behavior and, you know, just act irrational and think that things will just get away. So uh, apart from the fact that, yes, this uh, military personnel sounded very angry, we can't say what had happened after that time uh, that was, was being videoed or captured. But we don't expect that they would just, you know, he would be let off just like that. We also expect that they will be handed over to the relevant authority, which is actually the police, and justice would actually take uh, precedent. That's it. And away from that, there's also another conversation that's gotten a lot of people talking is that the police in Oyo State have arrested suspect in connection with the death of Adeshina Olainka, uh, an Instagram cloth vendor who was found dead in a hotel in Ibadan. The suspect is actually in custody of State Criminal Investigation Department, right there in Ibadan. Now, uh, however, it was reported that the staff of the hotel disclosed that Olayinka stopped breathing before they arrived at the hotel, and when uh, it was discovered, it was she was still breathing. Were quickly called on police, and uh, unfortunately, she died before getting to the hospital. Uh, so, however, the suspect uh, been called on the suspect to inform about the incident. He rushed the uh, down to the hotel to present himself to the police. I mean, it's, a, it's a different story. I mean, there are different stories to this particular one. But what we can say is there are too many lessons to take away from this. Several blogs actually took out this report. There were different reports and there are different lessons that we can learn. Just as much as we're expecting that you know, the relevant authorities will pay attention to it. That's the security agencies will pay attention to, you know, what it is, go ahead with the entire process, investigate, and ensure that justice has to be served. Because that's the only way people would have to learn. If people know that you will do the time for every crime that you commit, then it would serve as a deterrent. 
uh, we probably would be saying, oh, we are lawless people. Well, not a lawless people. It's because, you know, the laws have not been invoked. And people just think that you can do anything and get away with it. So if we eventually get to a point where we have uh, a system where you don't no longer have strong persons, but you have strong institution, the law would take its course to the latter. It doesn't matter whoever it is that you are in the society, including myself. And so, yes. That's exactly when we know that we've gotten into the part of the society. But we talk about the lessons, uh, because if you uh, are very uh, swift on the internet or social media, then I'm probably sure that you have run across this particular story of this young lady. And some people say, oh, yeah, she probably has a, a very decent job or well, business where she promotes, but other people see on the other side, I mean, she's committed to extracurricular activities, uh, probably to just end extra money uh, for whatever reason. And uh, that has actually happened. But I think that uh, accountability, whether to family, friends, it's also very important at, at every point in time. It's not actually a reason of control. I also think that it's important that we do our due diligence before we get to meet and interact with people. The days are probably evil. You can't compare the times that we're in in 2023 20 years behind, things were quite different. People had the luxury of, you know, just stopping by someone's house and having a meal. But, you know, the days are, we're, we're evolving and times are pretty, you know, um, different. But this is actually also a challenge to the men of the Nigerian police force to ensure that uh, what is right is done investigation is done to the latter and whoever is involved the corporates must be bought the truth justice must be served and that's the only way we can move forward in a democratic dispensation and just before we move away to a paper review this morning there's been also a development uh, where governor baba Ghana Zulim of Borneo State has extended the retirement age of teachers in state by five years okay so teachers in the state uh, have the privilege, you know, to stay for up to five years. And this was contained in a secular from the Borneo State Teaching Services Board signed by the Permanent Secretary, Malam Yusuf, uh, that reported the incident. And then uh, President, you also remember that President Mohammed Buhari had uh, given a nod to four bills recently passed by the National Assembly, including harmonizing retirement age for teachers in Nigeria uh, Act, that's according to 2022. The Act also provides for the retirement age of teachers in the country. If you look at Section 1 of the Act, that states that teachers in Nigeria shall compose really retire on a 10, when they get to the age of 65 uh, or 40, pensionable service, whichever, uh, or earlier, while the provision of Section 3 of the Act provides that the public service rule or any legislation that requires a person to retire from public service at 60 years of age or about 35 service shall not apply to, to become a teacher in Nigeria. Honestly, I, don't, I, I, I can't speak for other climbs, but uh, this, this song is very popular. There's this particular song that's very popular. If you, <laughs> I don't know, but I probably would think that everyone could really relate with this particular song. It says, since I was, this is the song used to say, uh, since I was young and now I'm getting old, you know, you haven't seen certain stuff. I can't say what it is. So you can insert the words right there. But um, uh, we, we live in a different climb, you know, our polity, policies, Everything seemed to be a bit different, and you can't say. I think that if you get to, if you if you look at what's peculiar to us, you get to a certain age. I think that the body needs to rest. You know, some sort of rest is required. Those who have committed time to service, we, we need to pay attention to that. We also need to look at life expectancy for us, uh, because it's peculiar to us as a people. And I, I really do not... Uh, I begin to question when we have to add like extras, you know, to the people. And then it feels like, okay, then you have an option, right? We also need to pay attention. 35 years is a lot of time to put into service. And exactly what are we communicating? What, what's the rationale behind that? And for those who are, because it's, it's not because if you put more time, then you, you're going to be more comfortable and then you're going to have access to you know the basic things of life. There's no guarantee to all of that. So what's the rationale behind the extra? And for the people who have done 35 years, and what have you, what exactly has been their case and situation? You find that people still have to queue, people have, still have to protest for what they have actually earned. 
Now, that's not a fair system. Honestly, that's what we have to say. But I think that nothing is impossible because it's not rocket science. And then I think we live in a climate where if we are committed to the people that have elected us or that we find ourselves representing because that conversation is very broad, then we have to be committed, you know, to their welfare. Because primarily, if you look at the Constitution, it is government's responsibility to ensure that lives and properties, I mean, the welfare of the people is is, is taken care of. That's in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Niger. And you know, the welfare is encompassing. It's not limited to a certain thing. It's not just limited to basic amenities. It's government's duty. That's the essence why government exists, to ensure that you will provide X, Y, Z in turn and the people will respect the laws. So yes, again, we say, what's the humanity? What's exactly the conscience? For every other time you have people saying we want to become governor, president, chairman of local government. What's the rationale behind it? Let's look at these people who put 35 years, extending, you know, act, adding extra five years, what, ex what exactly would that amount to? Is there a guarantee that they'll have a perfect life? 35 years after, what can they account for? No. That's the size of it this morning on our top trending. We'll take a quick uh, break. When we return, we'll be looking through the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.